What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, kids. It's, I almost said Thursday. And I'm not drinking, and it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And my guest today is Danny Taylor, and he makes me very nervous. So we don't want to keep him on hold too long. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I cannot stand it. I'm so excited to be interviewing this guy. It's just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I want to remind everybody real quickly before, because like I said, I don't want to keep him on hold for too, too long. I want to remind everybody about tomorrow, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. I know it's very unusual for me to have a nighttime interview, but this guy is relatively special, just like everybody else on my show, only he makes me a little more nervous. George Christie Jr. is going to be on the show tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. And just to remind everybody that's going to be on my other show, which is Sun Spotlight. This is, of course, in Chat Corner. Sun Spotlight, of course, is my uh, biker relative show. So he's going to be on at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time Um it should be a lengthy interview. We're not talking Celine exclusively about um, the Hells Angel affiliation. In fact, probably 80% of it will not be that. So sorry to disappoint, but there's more to this man than the club, of course. So very excited. Six o'clock Central Standard Time. And one more quick reminder, just want to remind everybody, please, please, please take some time to check out my page. Notice that I've been reposting every single day about Phil Marish, which is my very dear friend who's going through the heart transplant stuff. So please, even if you cannot donate, just keep sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. More to follow on that as we go along. So without further ado, instead of waiting for Danny, uh, having Danny wait on hold, let's talk to him, shall we? Is this Danny Taylor? Is this Cindy? Yes, I'm so scared. I can't stand it. Oh, my God, you're so fabulous. You are so fabulous. I cannot stand it. I met Heather West in New York, and I said, talk to me about this Danny guy. And she just, oh, my God, we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked while we were hanging out with Chrissy Sims, as a matter of fact. So I've heard about you. I know. You you are too me. kind. You're too kind. I've been – I've been. No. Uh, I've been stalking you as well uh, on all your <laughs> social media, and I think you're Thank too you. fabulous. <laughs> you're too I, nice, I, I love actually. your poll. I love your I love your polls that you do. I love to answer your polls. Really? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, it's like, I, I think I it's important. What, 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 what do you not cook well? And I said nothing. <laughs> oh my god! I know. Or like sometimes I have to like do a, a precursor, like just so you guys know this is risque, because you know, like if you use the S word and you start talking about like sex, like. Nobody does that in the world, but you start putting stuff out there and it's kind of like a little risque, so you got to kind of watch it. But I'm sure you can empathize with this. I mean, I have, you know, almost 4,000 friends. And when I say they're my friends, I at least want to be able to say that most of them are my real friends. That means I know something about them. And how do I get to know something? I keep bugging you every day and I'm asking you questions. So I know what you're about. Like, for instance, the first question I'm going to ask you is like the most important question of the entire interview. So you need to get it right. Are you ready? Oh my, I'm nervous. Okay. What is it? So Danny Taylor, I creeped on his page, you know, because I do that because I'm a journalist and because I just want to know who I'm talking to. He puts out this lovely little thing. So this is important. Don't get it wrong. I want you to tell the entire 56,000 listeners right now what hippie juice is because I want to know. I'm kind of a hippie. I want to know what the heck oh, hippie, hippie juice, juice is. We um, all want to know. I'll, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'll have to look up the recipe, but it, it's, it's okay. something you make in a mason jar. <laughs> It's something okay, you make in a really? jar. and I personally don't drink it. But uh, because really? I'm 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 kind of a, a, a either a vodka on the rocks or two fingers of of uh, bourbon, and that's that's about it. But uh, oh my gosh, hippie juice! Really, the hippie juice is like lime juice, lemon juice, uh, a couple of kinds of different kinds of rum, some gin. I. I can't even fathom the the smell of gin because of something that happened in college. Uh, we won't talk oh, about. Oh gosh. It. Uh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, oh, I oh, that was the, the, the gin hanger was the worst. Um, <laughs> can't say I've had that yet. It, it's got you know if you can imagine something that you could mix with a drink, it's in hippie juice, and then you put it in a mason jar and you shake it up, and uh, okay. you go to a concert and you walk around with it all day long. 
Oh my God, that is too cool. I just, I love the, the saying. And I was like, I'm definitely becoming much more of a hippie in my older age here. So I'm like, oh my God, that is so cool. <laughs> hippie juice. I, I just totally rocked my yeah. world. I'm like, I'm so asking him about what hippie juice yeah. is. I'm like, that's the well, number so one question on my thing here. Just DT and you'll see the recipe on Just Ask DT. Yes, I recall saying that actually. And I'm going to reference that later in our interview so that everybody that's knows right. that because and, inquiring minds and it's won't also remember on my, that, so. uh, my professional page. So, um, yes. So, yes, yeah. he is a professional. Yes, we're going to talk about a lot but, of those things. Yeah, yeah. First so, of all, I, I do do I, that tip of the day. So, yeah, yeah that's what <laughs> I was half tempted to have a little Friday, sip before I got Friday on this interview. Every Friday I post a drink. Every Friday I yes. post a drink uh, of, the, of, yes, the, you do. of drink of the week. So that's where you Yes, you do. And you also post tips of the day, and you also post um, little tiny little tips in terms of designing and, and creativity, all these sorts of different things that some of us, like me, know nothing about because I have a very beautiful rustic home, but I, I'm very non-familiar with the whole interior design thing. So you kind of intrigued me for a lot of different reasons. Um, <laughs> many, 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 many. And I'm not joking about that because everybody that comes on my show is a celebrity. So you are a celebrity, just so you know that. Everybody's a celebrity uh, on my show. You, you inspire, you educate, uh, you I, motivate, you create. Boom, there you go. That's it. That's the wow. That is the several. Well, you know, Thanks. nowadays we live in a society. Honestly, we live in a society where people define celebrities as you have to be on TV or you have to be on, you know, this or you have to be on that. No, you don't actually. If you're inspiring, you're educating, you're motivating someone. Hello, you're doing something other people aren't doing, and to me, that's a big deal. So, thank you so much for taking your time to come on the show. I think this is absolutely awesome, fabulous. Well, thanks for having so we're gonna me. Yeah. Anytime. Are you kidding me? Heather called me up and she's like, I have a client. And I'm like, oh, you don't have to ask me twice. Took two looks at you. And I'm like, he's coming on my show. That's all I'm going to say. He's nice looking. Right. He's got a great attitude. Apparently he likes to drink a little bit. I'm guessing he's probably a dancer too. And he used to live in New York City, which is where I'm going to live eventually. So I'm so excited. I do. So that's my first question. Yes. You were a former New York City resident. Now I know, of course, you're in Raleigh, North Carolina. So um, mm -hmm. talk to me about that transition a little bit because maybe it, I'm crazy, but, you know, the hustle, bustle, big time New York City, then you go off to somewhere like North Carolina. It's almost like two worlds. Do you know what I mean? So well, how well, do you know, think that I, 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 I was, I was um, born and bred here. And mm -hmm. at, at the age of 18, I was, I was already all signed up and registered and everything for one of these, you know, big colleges here. And mm -hmm. I went into, uh, I guess it was the, at that time they used to call them guidance counselors. I don't know what they call them now. And I said, right. you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm, I think I'm going to, I want to go to New York to design school. And she mm -hmm. said, well, it's a little late. It's March. And I'm like, well, too bad. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a sure. try. So I applied to Parsons and applied to FIT. I was accepted at both. But my parents said, well, we're not going to let you go to Parsons because they don't have housing. Ah. So FIT said, well, we have housing, but guess what? We don't have any dorm rooms available at this point. So my mother got on the phone ah. and she called our, our senator. Okay. And he called he called the head of housing at FIT, mm -hmm. and she, he called us back about a day or two later and said, "Miss Taylor, um, I don't think you'll have any more problems with those folks up there in New York City. Um, <laughs> they've, got a, they've got a fine room already ready for your son, Daniel Taylor. So oh we get up there. <laughs> we get up there, and they showed us to the room. The, house, the director of housing shows us to the room. And my mother walks in the room, and she she looks around, and she looks on top of this. The roommate had already moved in, but he wasn't there. She looked on top of the um, the uh, chest of drawers or whatever it was, and she said, um, "Excuse me, ma'am, um, what are those uh, things there?" Well, Miss Taylor, those are um, those are uh, an apparatus for smoking marijuana. <gasps> My mother said, "Well, this room won't do. Um, this room won't do. You'll have to find us another room." She said, "Well, Miss Taylor, there are no more rooms. Uh, we, we, right. we pulled strings to get this room." She said, "Well, can you please direct me to the nearest telephone?" 
she said, oh, no, that won't be necessary. That won't be ne- let, me, let me go downstairs and make some changes. So um, she came back. She said, um, Danny will be across the hall from my appointment, apartment on the ground floor of this residence hall. <laughs> I love telling that story. It's a great story. Of course. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Only in now, the South. So, so then, I was just um, going to say. After, Go ahead. Yeah, in the 80s. In the 80s, after, um, you know, years and, you know, doing the whole 7th Avenue thing and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Preppy was okay. starting to get big. and Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I was... I was starting to get kind of burned out uh, with the whole New York thing because um, people started dying. And, oh my God! I mean, that's kind of well, that's kind of depressing. But you know, it was like the gay cancer, and I said, right, right. Hmm, "Maybe God's trying to tell me something." So I, I called my parents. I said, uh, y- "Y'all need to come on up here and get me. It's time for me to go home." So I came back Ah. down and immediately started as design director for Nantucket Shirt Company. And as fate would have it, uh, I spent one week out of every month in New York in our New York showroom. So I was all over the place. I I mean, it was kind of crazy times. And so I've always been back and forth in and out of the city for business. But uh, I I understand. uh, I do. Yeah. So that's how, now that's I have a dumb how question. Happened. Well, and the thing is, I think a lot of times, and this is just my personal opinion, oftentimes when I interview anyone, it's always important to go way back to the beginning because I think you always kind of – most people don't deviate from their roots, so to speak, even like actors. When I do actors, I'm like some of their best work is a reflection of them in part then and them in part now. That initial stuff never mm-hmm. kind of leaves you. Um so we were just mm-hmm. ta- actually, Heather and I were just talking about this because you're a fashionable dude, so I knew you were going to be honest about this. Have you ever <laughs> attended Fashion Week? Because you know Fashion Week's going on right now. That's all the rage in New York City yeah, right now. Yeah, it's, it's all the rage. Well, you know, um, we, I, I've not attended Fashion Week since, um, you know, the the CFDA started what we now know as Fashion Week. Okay. That was a little before my time. Ah, I have okay. attended I got you. shows when they had them in Bryant Park, but now that everything's okay. moved to Lincoln Center. But in my time, in my day, Fashion Week was the old school people, and they would uh, they do it in their showrooms. Oh my gosh! Yeah, really. So, and like if you went, if you went, if you went to see Bill Blass, you went to see Molly Parnas. Uh, and that really dates me because uh, she's been dead forever, or Adolfo, or Jeffrey Bean, or anybody like that. You'd huh. sit in a, you'd sit in a little, you'd sit in the showroom. They clear up the showroom. You sit in the showroom, and they'd have the models come out one or one or two at a time, usually one at a time. And the buyers uh, would, because that was before celebrities and all this stuff was. You know, all uh, you know was all about Fashion Week. It was truly about the clothes. Well, that's kind of so what I'm was, leading to because I'm I'm not yeah I'm not hearing a whole lot of nice things um in terms of just because I've been asking and throwing feelers out there. I have to do an article on Fashion Week, and so I was asking people. I'm like, oh, well, you know, how have things been the last few years? It's not been pretty, I'm telling you. And I thought, well, you of all people would be a guy to be able to ask this to because, you know, I yeah. see all these different fashions and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is – to me, it just thing. I don't know. It's not the same anymore. But like I said, maybe it's, it's just not. me. I've only attended a couple shows. And it's – I think money has something to do with it. I have, uh, you know, some of the trends and styles and fashion. I'm just not thrilled with right now. I, I'm just not. You know, I'm pretty simplistic yeah. girl, so I'm like – Let's ask the boss here. Danny Taylor knows everything, apparently. You know about fashion. You know about design. You know about real estate. Hell, you know about everything. Well, I may as well just let you talk the whole hour. I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, you know, um, I, it, 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 you know, it, it's all about I, – I think Fashion Week now is, is all about um, putting on a big show for the press and then how much cologne, perfume, watches, shoes – handbags can we sell gotcha okay you know, and i used to think it was all about all this well that's just it and not only that the, the models are getting much younger that just the whole oh 
I'm telling you. Maybe it's just me, <laughs> and I don't know a whole lot about fashion, but well, I'm know, just I'm like, yeah, I'm not real impressed. Old, so I mean, at my age, I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> Older. What are you, like 30 now, right? You're like 32, 34. You're, you're, you're really, really very kind. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying uh, a word. I'm letting you say it if you want no, to say it because I'm um, not saying it. <laughs> I am 57 years old. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. I'm going to call bullshit because I can't on internet radio. Wrong. We're just going to say 40. Well, that's how you uh, you're just going to have to card me. You're just going to have to card me. Well, <laughs> I have to come all the way down there just to card you. That's absolutely right. Yeah. So now, obviously, you had already um, started to talk about the Fashion Institute of Technology, of course, which is where you had attended school. So. For your line of work, as it relates to the um, interior design or real estate, et cetera, obviously, am I to mm-hmm. gather that you're almost in a status of ongoing education for both careers, or is that kind of something where you're settled in, and now at this point you don't need to do that anymore? I'm not sure how crucial that is. Well, number one, old-fashioned designers become great interior designers. Ah, and and history that. proves me out on that. Do a little, just do, do a little research on a lot of them. Uh, most of us, when we kind of get to the point where we're just not that into it anymore. Okay. Uh, you know, we just want to wear a black turtleneck and a pair of white jeans, and you know, a navy blazer. Um, right. You know that it it, it, it we that. Putting together a house or a room is just like putting together a collection of of, of uh, each season of, of, of clothes. You know, you've got to start with um, color, texture, proportion, balance. You know, all those, all the, all the bones, and then then you kind of fluff it, you decorate it, and that's okay. that's that's the way we start. In terms of real estate, that's that's continuing education all the time uh, because of we're you know we're licensed and it, it involves state laws and it's different from state of course. State, but sure. So yeah, I that, 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 I just finished 16 hours of continuing ed. By the way, um, oh that sounds fun. To, yeah, I had to take toothpicks just to keep my eyeballs open. <laughs> Oh God, you poor dear! Oh my God! <laughs> so, <laughs> and I always sit in the front, just, so yeah. that they can, uh-huh. you know, so that they can look straight at me, and I can look straight at them, and I can, I don't lose focus, <laughs> you know. Oh, of like course, the, I can imagine. Sit in the back. Yeah, that content must be so exciting and wonderful. I can't even stand oh. it. I'm sorry that I'm missing that. Darn it! It's no, actually, I'm not. I prefer to teach. I don't like the student <laughs> thing. Now, talk to me a little bit about, obviously, of course, because you're in, you know, real estate versus doing interior design, per se. They're two somewhat same but different. So talk to me a little bit about if I was sitting with Danny right now and I said to him tomorrow, all right, you're going to have to pick one or the other, but I'm I'm not sure you're going to be able to do both anymore. Where does your true passion lie? Where does your best work, best efforts go into, do you feel personally? Meaning real estate versus you know, insurance. The best way for me to answer that is my true passion lies with houses or homes, I like to call them, and the way people okay. live. And okay. helping people create a nest, a cocoon, that they can escape to from the rest of the world, their safe place whether it's finding it, whether it's finding it and creating it, whatever role I play, that's the part of it I love. So to choose between one or the other, it depends on what day you ask me, quite frankly. Um, It depends on who the the client is. It depends on who the client is. (laughs) Wow, okay. And and I I work with a lot of investors. I work with a lot of investor clients, so okay. so luckily I'm able to to find and create my own type of product. And in this little sphere that I'm in, I've developed a following of people that that'll say, "Oh, that's a that's a Danny Taylor house." Um, wow! And then I'll put a sign up in front of it, and they'll go, and I'll I'll be 
you know, in a restaurant or at a bar or whatever. Yes, I do drink a little. I love Jesus, but I drink a little. Um, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, they, they'll, they'll come up to me and they'll say. I love Jesus, um, but I drink a little. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to remember this is the Bible Belt. Um, they, um, they'll come up and they'll say, oh, we love the houses you do. Really? And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know you from Adam's house cat. <laughs> and, and I just smile and I say, oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, right. Are you in the market? <laughs> do you have a yeah, real okay. <laughs> And if not, can I help you out? Da, 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 da. That's cool, though. I mean, that, that means you're distinctive or that you are out of the norm or unique, let's say, or for instance, which is kind of nice, and then, I would think. Isn't that what you're inspired flip, to do? It, it is. It's kind of neat because mm-hmm. I've developed this little niche. And then on the flip right. side of that, I can be in New York. I can be in Atlanta. I can uh, – uh, Prime example in High Point at at High Point Furniture Market, people Mm -hmm. from all over the world, of course, are there. I was standing in the Baker showroom, which is a very high-end line of furniture, and I'm standing there with the my my sales rep, and they they're walking me through, showing me all the new collections, and some very bejeweled woman with great big hair and lots of flowing silks comes running over to me. And she says, you're Danny Taylor. And I looked at her and she looked at me. Uh And then I looked back at the lady and I said, well, yes, I am. So nice to meet you. She said, I follow everything you do. I'm on your Pinterest pages. I look at your blog. I'm on all your Facebook pages. I love the tip of the day. I I can't start my day without the tip of the day. Oh, my God. And so, wow! I said, "Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate that." Right. She said, "Well, I'm going to leave you alone." So my sales rep turns around and looks at me. She says, "Are are you somebody?" <laughs> and I said, <laughs> "Are you I somebody?" Said, I said, "No, I'm no, I'm not." <laughs> oh, you said it's simple. Of course, I am. And then I go two <gasps> showrooms down. And the same thing happens again. And my assistant that really? was with me went, he, was, he, okay. he, go, he goes behind my back and he says, this happens to him everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> See, so people recognize you constantly. So you're almost like a household name by this time, aren't you? Oh, law. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's right. I'd probably recognize you, and I've never even met you in person. Of course, I'm talking to you, so I could probably not forget the voice now because you've been on my show, but still. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You should be very pleased by that. That is that's, that is terrific. Now, I want you to talk to me a little bit about, because I'm kind of fashion stupid, not because I don't dress well, but meaning that when it comes to designing things or dressing things up, I'm poor at this. I'm even worse at real estate. So I'm kind of like a dummy when it comes to this, but I'm a very smart journalist. So I know the right Mm -hmm. questions to ask you. So we'll start with something simple. Mm -hmm. So let's say Danny gets hired to go and and do, um, to design one room in a home, let's say, for instance. Do you, you have... uh, for lack of, I don't know how else to ask this. Let's say you walked into my kitchen right now, and I said to you, you know what, I want a whole makeover for my kitchen. What's that process for you? Meaning you walk in, how do you figure out what color patterns you're going to use? How are you going to figure out what you're going to decorate or accent it with? What all goes through your mind? Or what, what Do you have a process? Is there a process for, for designing? Uh, there's always a process. So the so first thing I do is I say, well, let's sit down and talk. Okay. I do this with real estate. I do it with design. Anytime I'm doing anything with uh, with someone that I don't know on a personal level, um, okay, I will I will say, well, let's talk, and I'll ask you some leading questions, and you'll hopefully give me some answers to those questions. Mm-hmm. And I like to think I'm a pretty good profiler at this point, and so. Okay. I can usually kind of walk inside your head and open up a few doors and close them back up and come back out. And Hmm. within a half an hour, I'll say, 
Okay, I think I know what you want. Um, let me come back to you with a couple of options, okay. and we'll go from there. And hmm. it's very rare that when I come back to you with options, you go, oh, I hate it all. Start, uh, no, you, that, that's not good. Let's start over. Mm-hmm. And if you do, I say, well, you know what? Maybe I'm not the right person for you. You have to realize everybody's not for everybody. Well, oh, no, I agree with you as far as that goes. You just make it sound so simple, kind of like I go in, I sit down with this person, we do this, we do this, and then you know you kind of go from that point um, on as far as well, that goes. Well, if you listen to you ever... people, if you like, ask people questions, and if you listen to them long enough, talk, and mm-hmm. let them really, you know, really kind of get to the the heart. You you know, you have to ask. Well, how do you use your kitchen? Well. Do you cook a lot? What do you like to cook? What, uh, sure. How many people are in your family? Is, is you, know, you you have to ask a lot of questions. Oh, um, I imagine so. Yeah, and then you know, I I know I have some clients that <laughs> say, you know, well, we need to freshen up the kitchen, but we don't cook, so just make it pretty. <laughs> Oh so my that's what I gracious. do. I go in and make it pretty. You know, we put up. I gotcha. You know, uh, you know, we'll put up a beautiful, you know, window treatment and gorgeous wallpaper and beautiful marble and great hardware, and it, they never turn on the oven. Oh my gosh, that just blows my mind away. I just can't even imagine that. Mm-hmm. It's like you go through mm-hmm. all the trouble to design something, and boom. So. That leads to an even better question. I am certain at some point in time you've had what you call a design disaster, have you not? Where you were just mm. from start to finish like, oh, my God, this project, if you can talk about it. I'm just curious if mm. you guys have such a thing as a design disaster. Mm. Cindy, Cindy, Cindy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we, we've, <laughs> we've had a few. Trouble. We've, had, <laughs> we've had a few. You don't um, have to mention names or houses. but I, I can't mention any cute. names, but... There, there are people in this world that, you know, my philosophy is if I don't know how to do something, I'll hire an expert. You know, I, gotcha. I, I don't know how to build a fence, so I'll hire somebody that's the best fence builder around, right? Sure. So there are other people in the world that think, well, because I'm really good at this and I've made a lot of money doing that, then I'm good at everything. Sure. And then they – Hire me as the designer, and I come in and and I'm like, well, I think we should do this, 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 and they'll go, mm-hmm, 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 and we'll start and we'll give them the budget and they'll approve the budget and we'll start ordering stuff and things come in and we'll start getting installed and we'll go back to the project and they will have moved everything. And they'll say, well, we li- well, I like it better this way. Oh. And so, you know, oh my. We, you know, we say, well, um, well, you know, you're going to have to live here. So, uh, right. you know, all we can do is give you our best opinion and suggestion and you'll have to take it from there. Uh, because I've got a house and right. I love the way my house is decorated. So, uh, I hope you like what we've done so far, and it's been a pleasure. <laughs> and <good luck>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of what I figured. That's one like of the reasons. Them. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I did, why I do interior design. Uh, I bring in antiques, uh, we, and mm-hmm. we work with a lot of other decorators here. Really? I mean, yesterday I had four decorators in here, one right behind the other, because we oh my had gosh. probably. We probably had four shipments of antiques in the last month come in from all over the country and wow. different estates and stuff. And it, I gotcha. You know, it's not it's not like, you know, like it's not like grandma's um you know, antique shop that you see on the side of the, the freeway. It's good mm-hmm. stuff. It's estate quality stuff. And so they come in and they look for things for their clients when they're doing a job. Mm-hmm. And we work with them. And um, it, it, I mean, it, it, it's it's great for us because it, it oh, I helps. imagine. 
helps turn inventory. And the, the, the bad thing, though, is when uh, the clients find out where the stuff came from. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then the clients start coming here on their own. <laughs> oh, my. and then they say, "Well, we really like what you do. Would you like to come? Would you please come to our house?" <laughs> and we have my to draw the line. We have to say, "Well, no, because we're you know we're really fond of Miss So and So, and I'm sure she's doing a beautiful job for you." Oh my goodness! Look at that. Now. I want to ask you this question because we all in the business world have somebody who has inspired us or acted as our mentor, et cetera. For you, you had mentioned a gentleman by the name of Mr. Yetter. So I wanted to ask oh, you about Mr. that. Oh, Mr. Yetter, um, bless his heart. Yes, yes. You mentioned that he was one of your mentors. So explain to our audience a little bit what it was about him that you found so moving or motivating or just tell us about him. When I first – well, I've had my real estate license for a long time, but in <laughs> with my luck, right? In in I think July of '07, I decided to activate my license. <laughs> Probably the worst time in history to activate your real estate oh license. Oh my gosh! Okay, but but I did, and Mr. Yetter, after I was at this other firm for a couple of months, and that Mr. Yetter was at. Uh, he says, would you like to become a part of my team? Because in real estate, you Mm -hmm. have certain teams. And I'm like, well, I don't know what is a team. I don't know what that means. You know, as green as a board. And so they brought me in. They, they, and he, he just basically taught me all the things that they don't teach you how to do in "Quote unquote real estate school." Really? Um, I ha- you know, uh, who do you call for the photography? Who do you call if you need a repair done? Uh, how how do you who do you use for a closing attorney? Uh, gotcha. All of the things that have to happen. Who's the best inspector in town? Um, all the things that have to go into a transaction and you know, they had developed this checklist and he gave me, uh, taught me a system of record keeping, which I still use to this day, of keeping my listings and my sales and what's under contract and when it closes. And we keep things in different binders. And once it closes, it goes from a binder into a, a folder and then it goes into the closed files. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it, it's it, it's a... And, and Mr. Yetter is the one that encouraged me to start my own firm. Aww. Because he said, um, Mr. Yetter, pretty legend in this town. And he said, you need to start your own firm if you're ever going to do it, and I'll mm-hmm. go with you. And that was just like, okay, well, let's go look for a building. So that's like the like ultimate that. vote of confidence. It's like the ultimate vote of confidence. It's like, oh, well, if Mr. Yetter says you can do it, you can do it. And then, did you ever? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, no. Finish. Go, that's fine. Go ahead. No, and, I like and then about the, this guy. The, the design firm kind of, you know, I was I was in interior design for years before I went into real estate, and. Then the design firm kind of evolved back into being once I broke away from one of those big box firms because people were calling me and asking me to do their houses still, and it was very contentious. It was was like, well, are you going to be a realtor? Are you going to be a a designer? And Mm -hmm. I just kind of kept having this idea that, you know what, the two go so well together we need to mm-hmm. create an atmosphere where a person can come and they can not only look for a house or buy a house or sell a house, but they can have that place where they'll have an expert to guide them on wall colors, um, finishes, you know, do I need to put granite mm-hmm. in my kitchen to, to get a certain price? Yes, you do. What kind? 
well, let me take you to my granite yard. Hmm. Um, these are your colors. This is your palette for your house. Let me call my painter. You know, it's that kind of thing. Gotcha. And then on the flip side, the people that are buying a house would be like, can I hire you to to do the colors for my house? And I think I need some wallpaper, and I want to change out those ugly light fixtures, and, and next year I want to do the bathrooms, and da, 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 da. And we're like, sure. <laughs> so, I'm listening just to this kind of like gosh. Well, right, and and most of the time, most of us, um, that's kind of how it starts. It usually isn't just, oh, it's running right off the ground and bam, boom, from one thing to another thing. It's usually a progressive sort of this happened and this happened and here you go and here we are. You actually brought up something interesting that I wanted to ask you about um, because some people may not be familiar with the term big box, like you were talking about big box, especially when it comes to real mm-hmm. estate firms. So define for us what you mean by the big box firms and how you distinguish yourself from that. Well, we are very proud of the fact that we are a true boutique firm. We okay. we know what our our you know we know what our specialties are. We we know where 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 our base of knowledge is, and okay. so people come to us and they're like, well. You're the you're the guy. People tell me that you're the guy that that that's the expert on on uh, single family houses within the downtown core. And I'm like, mm, yep, that's me. And then I'll have other I've got other agents that you know work a little further out uh, into the burbs. I call them, but. Just like every other city in America, we're seeing this reverse migration. And, I mean, I just got an email today from a gal that's living in Manhattan, and she's ready to move back to Raleigh after living in New York for God knows how many decades. And okay. this is my price range. This is the this is the area I want to be in. I've been watching your projects online. Mm-hmm. So she's been stalking me online. I have no, I, I've never met her. I don't, I, I, don't, I have no idea who she is. But I'm okay. looking forward to meeting her. Uh, you know, oh, so I imagine. It's kind of that, and then, you know, but then you've got the big box firms, and their whole thing is not so much the individual, because I do a lot of mentoring with the individual agents, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I like to, I like to feel like. You know, we're we're we have we we form relationships, and we just don't. We're just not salespeople. I get what you're saying. So you have more of an interconnected or an interpersonal relationship with the person that you're going to be doing business with, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and, uh, Got and, it. and 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 it's not that that backstabbing um, jealousy that you get in the larger firms where, well. How did she sell uh, thirty units this month? And I only sold five. Gotcha. You know, and you know we don't have those big awards banquets and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. We just we just have cocktail Friday. And we just all sit around the <laughs> conference room table that? with a big bottle of vodka, and we just go, <laughs> okay. So um, who's looking for what? What you got coming up? You know, what, you got any new listings coming? You know, talk to me. Gotcha. Now, I, I understand exactly what you mean. And I know that one thing that you have said that you put primary emphasis on is not only obviously the client itself, which is the first and foremost, but just being ethical and, of course, having a huge amount of customer service base, meaning everything that you do from every selection, from every phone call to the way that you promote yourself and the way that you take care of your clients, you're very customer service orientated. So um, I wanted to ask you, whether it's relative to the real estate side of things or whether you're designing something, do you have a particular base, meaning that are, are the millennials more attracted to you or are you finding older couples? I mean, do you have a specified crowd that kind of gravitates to your boutique type style? You know, it's it's very uh, it's very odd because my personal 
fear that I work with personally will range from that young family that has the two-year-old all the way to the the 70-year-old that's huh. selling off their investment property or okay. on the design side, they're recovering their furniture and making their drapes and they'll tell me, you know, this is probably the last time I'm going to do it, so I want to get it right. Ah, okay. So no, that's it's very odd. Now, hmm. now, now, some of my younger agents, their dynamic is totally different. They're they're working with their peers, so sure. they're they may be fresh out of college. They might be freshly just married. There might be a bun in the oven. You, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, no, they, I understand. And, and then I have another agent, and, you know, she's very social, and, you know, she's um, a whole different sphere than any of the, uh, the rest of us because, you know, she may be playing bridge at the club one day, and somebody will say, well, my daughter's looking for a house or another condo or something, and, oh, that's right, you're a real estate agent. She's like, oh yeah. So it 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 it's very it's very diverse, and and we I kind imagine. of embrace that diversity. We we like that. Of course, and diversity actually is is what again what differentiates, and sometimes will be the difference between someone picking you versus not picking you. We all know that flat out. The more comfortable and the more relatable we are to somebody, it's much easier, I think, to gravitate towards using them for services. Obviously, I can tell you that I've read your reviews. So most of your clients have said that you are very fair and honest, full of integrity, and maintains a very high spirit and energy level, which I can totally picture by looking at you. Um, <laughs> If I were to, and I'm not lying, if I were to ask you, Danny Taylor, if there is one thing about your business or the service that you provide that you might alter or change or you think might need a bit of work, if there's anything at all, which I highly doubt, what do you think that might be? Do you think it might expand well, I, out to another well, branch I, or do something different? No, no. I used to think that. I've, I've gotten over that. I don't. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very content here in this hundred year old house near downtown Raleigh. Aww. We have three floors and, and I kind of came to the conclusion that you know i don't I don't care about really being bigger. I don't really care about growing and being a whole lot bigger. Uh, what I do care about is being better so okay. If there are, if there there is a client or if there's somebody that that just we just are not clicking, mm-hmm. I just wish them well and say, you know what, this is just not working out. I don't think for you or for us, and we're just going to release you from your agency agreements, and you are free to move on. And if we can ever help mm-hmm. you in the future, please mm-hmm. let us know. Ninety-nine percent of the time, they come back. Nice. After it's a really good percentage with another agent. Gotcha. It's okay. crazy. It's absolutely right. crazy. Well, and that's going to be my next question because I'm not as familiar with North Carolina as I am with New York City. So my question is: Is are you inundated in your industry relative to real estate agents and designers? Are you rich in that area, or are you more of? Um, one of maybe five or ten. Well, yeah, this, this is one of the top markets in the country in real estate, Got and you. and that is and when people move here, they they always have sticker shock because they can't believe that we're getting three hundred dollars a square <laughs> foot for a teardown. Wow! So so they're like, well, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh. and we're like, well. Maybe we should show you some things a little further out of town, oh. uh, and uh, to get you everything you need. Because they'll come, they'll come right. to us and they'll say, "Well, we want a three bedroom, two and a half bath house that's at least two thousand mm-hmm. square feet with a double car garage on a half an acre, and we want to be within five minutes of downtown Raleigh." Okay. And I just look across the desk and I say, "It doesn't exist, and if you can find it." You better go ahead and buy five or six of them. Oh my gosh! Wow. 
I wasn't aware of that. That's amazing. Huh. So you've picked a great market to be in, obviously. And you know your stuff, clearly, judging by what I've looked at. Because, yes, folks, I've looked at lots of different pictures that he's done, places he's been in, things he's designed, real estate that he's tried to sell. So here's my next question for you. Uh What is the biggest challenge when you are attempting to sell real estate? Is it either, as I call it, a hook, which is obviously, of course, your job is to sell them a piece of property. So does it become all about the dollars and cents? Does it become about location? Mm -hmm. Or does it become about practicality and sensibility? Because there's some buyers out there that are all about, okay, we have kids, we have a 10-year plan, da 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 So what do you find is your biggest challenge with selling that house? Educating the consumer. Really? Because they just don't know. They just don't get it. They they don't understand why they could buy that same that why they could buy a house double that size mm-hmm. ten miles from here. Because they'll say, okay. Well, in in New Jersey, that's an easy commute. We just call that just going to the supermarket. I'm like, mm-hmm. Well, guess what? We're not in New Jersey. Right, obviously. Not that there's anything sure. wrong with New Jersey. I'm just saying. No, I get that's it. That's not where we are. No, I get it. Um, right, of course. Because uh, where we sell is a very tight, small footprint. The majority of what we sell is in a very small, tight footprint. And it okay. demands a very high price. It's like where we sell it would be equivalent of selling – uh, well, back in the old days, I guess uh, probably the Upper East Side. Uh, now, okay. I don't know. It's wherever wherever the people are, where wherever they're running off to now downtown. I think how they okay. live downtown somewhere. I don't know. I don't go yeah. down there. Um, when I go okay. to New York, I, I I I leave my hotel. I go to the Carlisle and have drinks. That's my, always my first stop. Right. And okay. um, the original Sarah Bess, you know, <laughs> Carnegie Hill. If I had to move back to New York, I'd move to Carnegie Hill. Ah, nice. That's where I'd go. Of course, you're not I could walk right to the now, museum. I could, I could, you know, I could walk to my breakfast spot. I could walk to my my watering hole. I could gotcha. walk over to Orsay for some French food. You know, I hate they close I guess close so. Swifties. You know, that, all that kind of stuff. But now that you had thrown that out there about living this 100-year uh, house, I, it begs to ask the question, of course, we have to ask, what does your house look like? How have you designed your home, where you actually live, and how close to it, it is it, How close is your house to most that you design? Um, normally, it's within five to ten minutes. Um, okay. And I, I, I maybe it will hit three traffic lights. <laughs> oh, Wow. People are like, oh, the traffic there is so horrible. I'm like, well, I don't know where you are, but where I am, I don't have any problems. Um, from right. from this house that we occupy for the business to our house where we live, it's, I don't know, maybe a, a four-minute drive. Oh, wow. Three-minute drive. We, okay. we pack up the two little shipses every morning and we come to work. Gotcha. And you, of course, and my house is very uh, traditional. I'm, I am very really? traditional, very oh, traditional. And our house is just a little cottage. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a. It, it, if you rode by, you'd say, "Oh, that looks like Leave It to Beaver lives there." Uh, white Aww. picket fence, you know, <laughs> the whole nine yards. Aww, rocking chairs on the so front sweet. porch. That's awesome. Actually, that's that's very old fashioned and very sweet, I have to say. And since you mentioned it, um, February 2013, you founded DT and Company Real Estate. Um, you right. have a staff of ex- how many are on your current staff right now? One, two, three, four, five, six right now. Then me. Okay. Okay. Now, of the people that work with you, have you hired personalities all of a similar mindset, or are there five or six intricate different people running around in one office together? Because sometimes that does work if you have six opposites. 
Well, they're not. I wouldn't say they're opposites. I'd say they they've all got their own little shtick. You know, they've all got their own little sure. thing. Um, or have done. But but that but we all come back at the end of the day. It's like the 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 last hire we made is a delightful young lady, and you know she. She's a CPA, graduated with a 4.0, then went on to Wharton School, and then went on to Harvard for an MBA. She's mm-hmm. had positions in all these huge pharmaceutical corporations, and and I looked at her and I said, "Why do you Why do you want to work work for me?" Mm-hmm. And she laughed and she said, "Well, because she has such a great reputation." And I said, "Well, that's very flattering, but really." Why do you really want to work here? I said, you're a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> She's like, yeah, but I don't know how to sell like you do. I'm like, well, Aww. yeah, I can sell ice to Eskimos. But, um, but yeah, so, so um, yeah, so we're, we're working with her and teaching her how to sell and giving her some right. scripts and and that's kind of what I do. That's what I really enjoy is mentoring um, young agents and giving them the scripts and teaching them how to not be, you know, it, we kind of have a reputation of not being overly aggressive with people mm-hmm. and, you know, just if, the, if you, you know, if you, if you, if you feel, if you're feeling the love and you want to work with us and, and you like what we do here, then come on down. And if not, if you want one of those big box firms that, you know, charts the numbers every week and, you know, puts your name on a wall and checks you off mm-hmm. once you close, then by all means, go. There's plenty out here for everybody. That's what I believe. Without a doubt, absolutely. And the nice part about this is, is that you help people to both design and develop their dreams, which is kind of nice because you start out with a very – most people end up starting out with a very basic idea, and then over time it kind of develops and it becomes this huge dream for them, and they get to watch it in phases actually become alive. So are Actually, you kind I of get excited? to watch it, and that's the, oh, well, that's right. the fun part. <laughs> that's right. Because now, at I what plant point? Seeds. I plant seeds, and the the fun part to me is that like, I'll be working with someone on, let's say, on a from the design angle, and I'll say, you know, that that rug would really look great in the dining room. Okay. And they'll they will fight me to the nail. No, we had that rug custom made for the foyer. No, 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 no. My husband would have a fit. <laughs> and then uh, six months later, they'll send me a picture. Or on the phone, you know, the whatever they call them. And uh, they'll say, we moved the rug to the dining room, and we love it. It's exactly like you said it would be. And I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Aw. <laughs> Look at that. And you know what? I know exactly what you're talking about because I talk to people all the time because I myself have been a long-time writer. And so when people come to me and they talk to me and then they decide and say, oh, you know, I always wanted to write this or I always wanted to do this. It's so exciting to watch something start out as a little teeny tiny thing and then all of a sudden, oh, look, now they're doing something about this. Or I kind of pushed them a little bit. It's actually quite exciting. Um, uh, for me as a writer, like, for instance, when I write your interview or any interview or any book or anything, you know how you have that moment? I don't know if, if designers or, or salesmen or, or things, anyone in your field mm-hmm. gets like this. Do you get that moment? Like, I, I feel it in my belly. Moment. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I just moment. get all excited. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's that moment you know you're doing exactly what you're meant mm-hmm. to do. So I was wondering that's about right. that. I'm like, do you get like that? Do you have those moments? Does that happen to you every Absolutely. day, every week? Is it still fresh for you? Um, it can it can be. Um, I'll tell you I'll tell you one experience that 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 let me know that that I was doing the right thing. Okay. I I met a couple, and they had been living in L.A. and some realtor had put them out in the burbs, and they had been living in downtown L.A. I mean, or, or Los Feliz or somewhere. And I'm like, mm-hmm. ooh. And 
so the wife and I became kind of close because she went to FIT, I went to FIT, and um, kind of a tragic story because she, she she's passed away now. But um, oh, I'm sorry. I finally sold their house in the Burbs, which it, it was in a, a neighborhood that had 52 active homes on the market out of maybe 200. It wow. was a tough sell in a tough market. Well, mm-hmm. I went through the house and I said, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And they did it all. Mm-hmm. And so I had to find them somewhere to live. So I put her in the car one day and I said, I think I found you the perfect place. Okay. So we're walking through this house. It's a big old Victorian in a historic neighborhood near downtown. She's walking mm-hmm. through, and she's uh, we're chatting. And as we get upstairs into the master, she walks into the master bath, and I'm standing, you know, out in the 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 master bedroom. And I said, "Are you okay?" She turned mm-hmm. around. There's tear, the tears streaming down her face. Oh she my said, gosh! You have made my dream come true. I've always wanted to live in a house just like this. All of my life. And, you know, it's when every hair on your body just just stands straight up and you get the little chicken skin. I I know. I know. And I was like, like, that's that that moment that people have been telling me about. Right. Exactly. It's a reason you keep going and doing what you're doing, etc. No, I Mm -hmm. totally, totally Mm -hmm. get it. I totally get what you mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, just so you folks know that are listening in, Danny and I bonded initially over this awful, and I'm going to use the word awful because I know you've been there too. Oh, my God. So I first started talking to this Danny Taylor guy, and they just extracted my teeth, and I'm miserable. I can't eat. I can't do anything. I was so miserable. It is a pain in the assets. Let me just say, ouch, ouch, ouch. It's finally now after like three weeks, I'm like, oh, I can start to like function and nothing's sore anymore. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if your experience was similar, but oh my God, people, if you're going to have extractions, you may as well just forget about living and eating for like a week because it was like mm-hmm. hell. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? Uh, yeah. Well, four weeks ago, I had two implants and an extraction. <sighs> ouch. Ouch. That's got to hurt. Ow. Well, I, I, I don't know whether it hurt or not. I, profanol, I mean... I I don't. Uh, all I remember is two people basically carrying me to the car, and then being oh driven God. to the to the other dentist to the uh, mm-hmm. that 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 put the crowns on top of the screws, and um, you know having pills shoved in my face for about a week, and oh when I finally came to, I was like, well. Eight grand later, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, and that's the other thing, too, is the expense. And it's just like, oh, my gosh. But, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to have it done. So I'm like, thank God that this is all yeah, over I mean, and you done know, and finished. It's a necessary evil, you know. You betcha, without a doubt, certainly. Now, I want to turn to the personal side of things first before I talk about the, these three or four things that I find neat and interesting that people should know about you from a professional side of things. On the personal side of things, first off, talk to us a little bit about, because I know the things that are very close to your heart involve the arts and animals, and um, you're certainly, of course, an environmentalist. So talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you wholeheartedly support as a person that you think that are important that we support as well, because I'm very big on that. Well, you know, I, 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 it, for me, it's really about everyone being treated fairly. I, I, I think mm-hmm. I, I like for people to be treated fairly and with the same set of standards it should apply Correct. to everyone. Correct. Um, Hands down. That's. That's extremely important to me. Um, I think people that abuse children and animals should probably be put somewhere underneath the jail. Um, Correct. That's just me. I agree. Um, my my whole mantra every day is to try to. 
put out something positive into the universe mm-hmm. as opposed to concentrating on what's negative. Um, one of the things that I repeat to myself all day long is, you know, I walk by faith and not by sight. And that's, 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 that's very important mm. to me is. Sure. And, 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 you know, I, um, uh, Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know how to explain it any better. So, certainly, I support the arts. You know, I'm a member of the Metropolitan. Of I'm course. A member of the, the 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 museum here. Um, okay. Things and of that nature, gonna... but uh, you know, I, I give money to certain charities, but I, I don't talk about it. Um, oh, of course. Sure. No, I understand. And, and I see that and you actually you, go ahead. I was going to note real quickly that I noticed that you are of the Episcopal faith. And so sometimes I like to ask my guests because, of course, I'm Catholic. So, of course, I walk around feeling mm-hmm. guilty 24 7 about everything all the time. Um, <laughs> Well, because that's how we are. I mean, you know, we're, of course, yeah, right. we have to feel bad about everything. We're never good right. enough. There's 1,800 rules. Well, when was the last time you were in so, confession, Cindy? <laughs> well, right about now, Danny, is what I'm feeling. Um, no, I, you know, I've come to, as, as we age, as you know, I have children, and I've raised them in my faith, of course. And I, and I do believe mm-hmm. a lot in, in, in Catholicism. I'm not going to lie. However, right. I'm not blind to things either, and there are just some injustices right. out there, and so I struggle. So I'm always looking for other faith bases, other spiritual things, other enlightenings. So just tell us a little bit. I mean, mm-hmm. Episcopal, I, I don't know much about how different that is from other religions. I'm just wondering if your spirituality is something that kind of keeps you sane, so to speak, because for some people, that's a great solace to them. So It, it is the only thing that keeps me sane some days. Um, wonderful. I, I start my day every day with, um, and I don't, I, don't, I don't talk about this a lot, but okay. I do start my day every day with, uh, devotional and sure. that is kind of what gets me centered mm-hmm. and you know the, the Episcopal faith is it's not a faith of, of a lot of you know ups and downs in terms of emotion mm-hmm. uh, it's very level you know it's not okay. like it's not like they bring you way up and then way down. It's it's you know you know what to expect from it, right? And you know a lot of people will say, "Well, oh, you're a Pittsburgh and you're Catholic light." <laughs> so and and you know a lot of people consider it, you know Catholic light, you know because right. it, it is it's, there are a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing is that we'll let anybody take communion as long as they've been baptized. <laughs> ah, gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. All, all are welcome to receive. And um, right. I, I, I don't know. I just get a lot of. I get a great deal of comfort from it. It, it, it's, it's what I base my existence on. Actually, oh, that is, is my faith. That is. My my now, faith is 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 the number one thing in my my uh, that I been going that I base my life on. And I think it's important for most people too. I think you know nowadays in the world that we live in, between all the stuff going on, God knows you need a spiritual base. You need something to believe in to keep you going, to keep you centered. Um, you know, I wrote a blog post once. And and uh, and at the end it said, it said it, to me, I don't care whether you believe in God, Jesus, Muhammad, right. um, Jesse James. I don't care what you call it. Just as long as it's not a dollar bill. Right, I agree. I'm good. Because I agree. For 180%. Me, and what I tell. Anyone that any one of these agents, I say, if you'll put that client first, then 
everything else will fall into place. Like I've Amen to that. Months. I agree. I, I haven't had a closing in six months. I said, uh, I'm I'm worried. I, I just worry every day. I worry every day. I said, well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. When you mm-hmm. stop worrying about money, <laughs> yep. when you stop worrying about money and you start mm-hmm. to be concerned about people, right. the money will come. You'll have Very more than advice, enough. Actually. And you'll have enough to share. You betcha. That's a really great philosophy. Kudos to you on that. I like that. I do. Now, and, and I have people, to ask People don't get it. A lot of people don't well, get no, it. Well, no, of course not. Oh, of course not. And so it's something, it's almost a lesson that has to be learned and relearned and relearned again for some people. And myself included keep, sometimes. Keep yourself lessons. humble. Stay humble. Amen to that one. Thank you very much. There you go. So now I have to ask this because you know I have couple of followers and some of them are single and you know they look at pictures of people coming on my show and then they're all about the mm-hmm. whole well can you find out if that person's single or seeing someone so I'm putting you on that mm-hmm. spotlight let's talk about the love mm-hmm. life a little bit Mr. Popular I've, do we have someone in I've, our life I have um I've been with the 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 same gentleman uh since uh, 1999 and oh my gosh and several years ago, we we went to New York and were married in Federal Hall. Oh, nice! And that was before that uh, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals took it up, and the Supreme Court right. eventually said, "Right, well, you know, everybody needs to be married." So, mm-hmm. and gotcha. now that um, things are a little amuck with um, what's going on this year. We've mm-hmm. um, we've kind of changed our wills and protected ourselves a little bit, a little bit right. more, just in right. case somebody goes off the deep end in D.C. No, I understand. No, I no, and I know. That's the I know. Supreme Court in a different way, and uh, and I don't talk about politics. I, I, just, I don't care what me you neither. do up there. Right. Just leave me alone. Right. Exactly. I agree yeah. with you 150%. You know, I, I definitely mm-hmm. do. And kudos to you on that. So did you hear that, boys? There'll be no cavorting uh, with him because he's very <laughs> married. Thank you. And all that good stuff. Hey, you never know. There's a, trust me. Trust me. So now, before we talk about the rest of your professional things, I ask the same question to every guest that comes on my show. Or mm-hmm. since you creep on me, you might already know this, and I'm going to ask you this. So everybody gets the interrogation when they come on, because I know you're going to be the one. I've been working one year to get this interview with this very handsome actor that's on my top five list. And I know you're going to say, well, yes, I know him. He's a friend of mine, and I'll hook you up with an interview. Because I just know you're going to say, I know that actor, Michael Madsen, and I know I can get you that interview, Cindy. Sorry, Cindy. And that's where... <laughs> It's another no. What do I have to do? Come on. It's like I, I have to stop know. my leg. But <sighs> now, if I put my mind to it, I, I could probably, I'm probably, there's probably a six degrees of separation there. Well, you know what? Trust. And that's what I find funny, too. It's like, it probably would be the case. I've been trying for a year, and I'm like almost done. So tomorrow, you know, George Christie is coming on my show. Now, George has met Michael uh-huh. Manson a few times. So I'm like... Uh-huh. Man, I do a good job tomorrow, and I'm not 100% be. sure, but we're going to try. But, you know, at this point, I'm like, I'm almost ready to give up. You know, but it's like he's like my dream five. You know, like I have those five dream interviews <laughs> besides Danny Taylor. Danny Taylor was one. Check mark today. So now we're done with number one. Now we can move on to the other four. But you have those fantasy. You know, you like I'm sure you have those people that you would love to design for or sell to or whatever. And so he's he's huge on my list. And I'm like, I just feel like if I give up, it's going to be like, Dude, you've been dreaming about this for a year. So I'm a little frustrated. So I'm just going to keep asking. I'll just get, I'll invite everyone on my show until I get to him. I don't care. I mean, I know it's a little I creeper. He's kind of like the best friend in my head, but he doesn't know that yet. But that's okay. Eventually, he's so going to find look, out you, you're stalking him, and then he'll come on the show. Right. Well, right, because then they're going to be like, there's, there's, but I'm a, but I'm a nice stalker though. I post like nice pictures and I say nice things and I use his quotes. So I'm not like goofy, crazy, like I'm dressing like him and buying all his movies and doing weird stuff. I'm just kind of like, you know what? Adoration is flattering. He'll be flattered. People and I. I, I do think that there's a side of him that people don't see. You know, he's so typecast in all this evil, 
bad, sinister, and he's nothing like that. All these interviews just show a very different side. So I just want to show the world a very mm-hmm. different side. You know, it's one of those things. Mm-hmm. Speaking of a different mm-hmm. side, so let's talk about this. Hello, Danny Taylor. He has made the cover of Midtown. He's been featured in Huffington Post. I can't even get him to look at my work, and you've been featured in it. Ouch. Thank you very much. He's also had his agents featured in the top producer magazine. Hello. Talk about fantastic. How'd you manage to score all that one, Mr. Fashion Designer? And, or, excuse me, Interior Design slash Fantastic Man. Those are some serious accolades. Just saying. They come to me. I don't know. They come to me. I, I've never That's once awesome. pursued it. I've never once pursued it. That's amazing. It. Um, but that t- doesn't uh, that tell you something? Mm-hmm. He's fabulous. Fantastic. You know, I, I try to stay humble. I, 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 let, I let other people say those things, and I just stay humble. And, I just yeah, go, and you're like, yes. I, I, just, okay. I just go, I'm so glad you like what what I do. And it's amazing. And it, and it, it is a true testament when, when people like that are out there and they're saying, hey, I want to know this person. I want to write about this. That's an important thing. That's a great accolade. Um, talk to me about, um, for those that are listening that are unfamiliar with the Just Ask, DT group. Talk to them about what you offer within the confinements of that group and how they can get involved with it and follow it every day, et cetera, because that's important <laughs> just so they can keep track of you. Seriously. Well, well, I'll, 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 I'll just give you the background and then I'll tell you what I do. Um, a friend okay. of mine from high school that, that lives in D.C. emailed me and said, my son is going to be in a wedding and what kind of shoes – should I buy for him to wear with a seersucker suit? And so I said, well, white bucks. She said, Mm -hmm. well, what kind of shoes do you wear with your seersucker suit? I said, I wear um, brown Gucci loafers. And Mm -hmm. she's like, well, why do you wear brown shoes and not bucks? I said, well, if you're over a certain age, you know, you, you probably should be wearing white bucks. Right. Uh, and she, she's like, you need to start a, 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 a group on Facebook that, that, that you give a, huh. you know, one of your tips every day. Okay. And so thank you, Gina Rothschild. Um, that's what I do. She's the one that made Aww. me start it. I started on a dare and now I think, okay. uh, and it's a cl- it's, it's a closed group, so you have to ask to become a member because you know it used to be an open group, and then people would would log on and they try to sell you know knock off Ray Bans and stuff like that. And sure, it was just weird, so I had to close the group down, and and mm-hmm. you have to be approved to to you have to anyway. So every every morning when I do all of my social media stuff and I do it from like mm-hmm. five thirty to eight thirty in the morning. Right. I do the first thing I do is the tip of the day. And some days yep. it's a DIY project and some days it's uh how to uh utilize best use of your space if you're living in a small space and some days it's about a cleaning tip and some days it's about some uh, a way to avoid using chemicals if you can use an organic um, alternative and some days especially during the holidays it's about recipes like my, oh of course one person said said um, I, I don't know how to make gravy like my mother did well I can identify because, you know, my mother's deceased, and it took me a while to learn how to make gravy. So I did the whole thing about this is how you make gravy. And they were like, oh, thanks so much, DT. And I'll do things like, you know, around Christmas, I'll, like, do things. If you're having a party, this is the this is the standard. This has, This is how much you need to have for each person. This is how you set up a bar. This is what you need. You need this, this, sure. this, this, this. Um, so it's all kinds of stuff. It's a mixed bag of tricks. And I'll have people oh, that up. tell me. I'll have people that tell me that um, they will. Well, people that that'll that'll send me messages. They'll say, uh, "How high should I hang my 
my light fixture over my dining room table? How <laughs> high should I hang the pendants over my island? You know, and so I'll put out charts about lighting, how how high the lighting should be for every situation. It, it's just it's just general tips. Uh, I call it tips for everyday living. And it's and they're neat. And what's interesting is is every time I wake up, it's like right there waiting for me because you're and up at the crack of dawn. I ain't gonna lie. Th- that's what everybody says. So well, seriously, because I look DT, and I'm just like, oh my sleep, god. DT? And I'm like, yeah, I do sleep. I I know. I just ask me. I'm like, there he is again. Yeah, I bet you do. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I was up at five today, and I was just like, about an hour before our interview started, I'm like, okay, I will not fall asleep right now. I will not fall asleep. There might be mm-hmm. an app coming after this particular interview because you've exhausted mm-hmm. me from all of this extensive talking and excitement involved with your life. <laughs> yes, your life excites me, right? Hey, welcome to my world. I get excited very easily. I do get excited very easily, actually. So, you know, what can I say? I want to talk about, of course, tomorrow. From 4 to 7 o'clock, you are hosting an event, Sip and Shop. So tell the folks about that, especially because we have folks in the listening audience that are in and around your area. So talk to them about what's involved with the event, Sip and Shop, and where it's located. Okay, we're at, we're at 715 West Morgan Street. That's at the corner of okay. Mor- Mor- Morgan, West Morgan and St. Mary Street, okay. which is pretty much on the edge of downtown Raleigh. Okay. And what we 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 do this about once or twice a year when we get nice. in uh, most of our antique shipments for the year and we've got all of our new listings that are coming soon that'll be hitting the market in the next month or two so the top floor of this building is all real estate the main floor is reception the design room my office and some display space and then downstairs is all of the antique vignettes. So we've got everything in here from a 1928 Chickering Grand Piano to wow. uh, um, yeah, mirrors, lamps, you name it. Uh, artwork, artwork out of kazoo. Um, so tomorrow from 4 to 8, we're okay. going to throw the doors open, and we'll have the DT cocktail, and we'll have Ooh. beer and wine and, and water and sodas for the teetotalers, and we'll have Ooh. some little southern delicacies like cheese straws and chicken salad cups. Oh, my gosh. Pimento cheese and all that kind of good stuff. And so we'll have a realtor on the top floor, a couple of realtors up there, and they'll be talking to people about our listings that are coming soon and uh, myself and Betsy will be talking to people about the antiques and the design room and the new fabric collections that have come in. And then, and my partner David will be at the front desk taking people's money. Holy mackerel. I'm impressed. This sounds nice. I'm actually jealous that I can't be there. I'm very, very, I wish you could be here. Well, you know, Oh, my God. See, here's the problem. This is what happens when you become a media person. That means I have to interview, like, people such as yourself, which means tomorrow if I came to your party, then I I couldn't interview George. And, frankly, I'm a little afraid of George. So we don't want to do anything to upset George. You want to give him a nice interview? George is – Yeah, I wouldn't want to upset George either. Yeah. Well, you know, a little alcohol ain't going to hurt. I ain't going to lie. I'm pretty sure about 6 o'clock tomorrow we're going to yeah, have a glass of wine while we're interviewing. Hey, I've been known to drink while I interview people. You probably wouldn't know if I did because I've just gotten to that point. Because sometimes, you know, you know what it's like when you get a little nervous. You're interviewing somebody. You're yeah, a little tense. You you're not sure how it's all going to go. You know, you want to relax. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I've had a long time to prep for this interview. I mean, I, I have, you know, four pages of questions. That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot for one person. So, um, I've done my homework, um, you know. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I would I'm sure it's going to be fine. I mean, I'm a little nervous, but he keeps telling me he's just a regular guy, and I'm like, no, George, you're not. <laughs> There's nothing about George that's normal. <laughs> There's nothing about Danny Taylor that's normal either, except for the fact that he has extraordinary talent and he's cute, and he has all these wonderful honors, and you have like one of the best. PR people in the entire world. I really do love Heather. I think she's absolutely lovely. Um, 
So I must thank Heather West because without her, I wouldn't know you. And without you, I would never show. So basically, I really need the both of you. She is absolutely wonderful. Now, before I forget a couple things here, I'm going to go through this list and read it off for everybody so that they know. Um, you have a Facebook presence in two different ways. First of all, the DT and Company Real Estate. And then, of course, your personal page, which is the Danny Taylor. Your website is dtandcompany.com. You have an Instagram, which is DT and Company. And then you're also on Pinterest. Did I miss anything? Oh, of course, obviously, the Just Ask DT group, which you have to get permission to get into that. Any other places and that's all on can Facebook find you? Too. Yeah. All right. And then right. There's, there's DT and Company Interiors Facebook page. Right. Uh, it just, you know what I tell, I told somebody the other day, they were asking me about, you know, they, they were not, as we would say down south, they were not from around here. (laughs) And and he was asking me uh, all these questions about what I did and and how he could find me. And and I said, you know what, Um, just Google DT and company and all that stuff will come up. Plus, you know, I do a blog, and um, right. and it all kind of gets connected. So, yeah. Oh, oh, I totally get that. If Definitely. you get to I'm one, you get to all of them. Well, right. What? It's like that one thing leads to another thing leads to another. So now mm-hmm. the big question is, mm-hmm. do you know when you're going to be back in New York City? Because maybe we could be in New York at the same time. <gasps> um, I would like that. Ah, oh, that would be fun. You and I and Heather. Yes, Ooh, it would. That'd be fun. That'd be oh, kind of my dangerous. God. That's it I'm starting to think hangover trendy. right now, hangover. Because, you know, <laughs> when I met Heather and she knew you were coming on my show, so, you know, she told me to ask you about something. Now, you'll notice that I haven't asked you because I was like, do I want to ask him? You haven't asked me. I want to ask him. Well, you know, there's that little, I think that it has something to do with the studio of some kind or something along those lines. Does this ring a bell at all? <laughs> At well, all. back in the late seventies, I was a club kid. <laughs> <gasps> he was, and you act like you're so old right now because you totally wouldn't go to I a was, club or go out and do any of this. I, I was a club kid, and so on Friday nights it was a little crowd, and uh, that we would travel. I traveled with, so it was myself and Michael Kors, and there was this girl named oh my Kelly, God. and. Kurt Wagner, who I think now lives on Long Island, and right. sad to say that the other ones are dead. Oh no! Yeah. That was years ago, probably. So, right? Um, what's that? That was years ago, probably then, right? Yeah, they. When you were they like, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they 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 kind of passed away in the in the late eighties. Um, gotcha. Uh, which was very sad, but. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Friday night was the studio, and then Saturday night was the village. I mean, oh uh, I used to go to the Flamingo, to Crisco Disco, <gasps> Mud Club. Oh my God. Uh, CBGBs. I've had Deb Harry serve me a beer and then see her go up and do a set. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> oh my God. Hi. The best was. But I was at Bootsy Collins' birthday party at Flamingo. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, now you I haven't like lived until you've seen Bootsy Collins in person. I have uh, not. I have know, not. Dancing the night away. That was, on, that was when Flamingo the, – the, We. I remember it so well. We got on a we, – we went over – it was like on 10th or 11th. It was almost on the river, this old warehouse. Sure. And we go in and we get on a freight elevator. Remember now, I'm like 18 or 19 years old. Oh, sure, sure. I'm like fresh off the turnip truck. And (laughs) (laughs) I get on this freight elevator and we get up to the 12th floor of this building. And Mm -hmm. the door opens and it's like madness. And it's, I'm like, it's Bootsy Collins. It's his birthday. Oh my gosh. I didn't mm-hmm. bring him a present. <laughs> 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 and you know, people will say, Well well, you know, I remember one night at studio, that was when Oscar De Laurenta was that's when Francois was still alive. Right. And 
this girl Kelly had this big chiffon scarf, and we were out on the middle of the floor dancing. And you know, they had, used to have those things that came down in the middle of the floor. And you know, Andy Warhol and Liza and all of them were back there and sure. behind the DJ booth. And Oscar and Francois came out and they started dancing with us underneath this big chiffon scarf. It, I mean, oh such experiences, gosh. you know. I mean, people right. will say, you know, you need to write a book. I'm like, who would want to read about this stuff? Um, I remember one night um, hello? There being on the on a banquet on, in the very back of the dance floor. There used to be this, this, these risers. They were like bleachers almost. There was, uh, mm-hmm. And I was on the top of one of these bleachers, and I turned around and looked, and I recognized this woman, but I thought, really? I don't know. Maybe. Because I was never a big drug abuser or anything. You know, I, was, I was like a two-drink-and-done kind of guy. Sure. Um, and uh, it was Rita Hayworth. <gasps> and she was oh trying to God. put on lipstick. And she turned around to me. She said, did I put on my lipstick straight? And I was like, oh, my um, God. I was like, well, yes, ma'am, it looks great, but you've got a little bit on your teeth. You might want to bring your tongue across <laughs> that. And sure. she said, thank you so much. You're such a nice young man. Oh, my God. Thought, How cool I thought, is that? Okay, I, I just had a really cool experience. You know, That's I've seen awesome. my back sitting there by himself looking like he lost his best friend. I remember seeing um, Lauren Bacall and Walter Cronkite were in oh front of me God. at the coat check line one night. Uh, so many strikes to go on and on, but um, so many famous people in and out of there. And to be have been in the middle of that was just wild. And and then I remember back. It, it was it was I guess it was in the nineties sometime. Uh, mm-hmm. I was in a restaurant on oh, what was it? Uh, it was somewhere uptown, and. I looked out the the window and there was Halston walking back to his townhouse from the dry cleaner. And I thought, oh my, oh my, how the mighty have fallen. Because, you know, he was Olympic Tower, you know. Right. And uh, nope, all that was gone. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, I, it just goes to show you. Always be humble. Don't take anything for granted. Exactly. You know, count your blessings. Um, you're only guaranteed one day at a time. Use it wisely. I agree. A hundred and fifty. Kind of my mind, That's for sure. That's the way I exactly. Way I go, because there, but by the grace of God, am I? Because you know, I, I I fully believe that somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said. Okay, it's time for you to get out of this town because there's some bad stuff going down around here, and mm-hmm. you need to go somewhere where you can kind of chill and be safe. Exactly, and make people's dreams come true. Help them design and create their dreams, and, which is know, awesome. And I, I always wonder every day, you know, why, why, why me? Why did you? Why was I spared when there were so many talented people that were not? Oh, well, of course. So it makes you just, wonder, doesn't it? There's a reason for it really everybody does. and everything. Honestly, it is. So you know it that does. means you got to find time to come to New York City when we're all in New York City at once. Because I was just there and you weren't. Chrissy and I and Heather were there, and you were just like, "Well, I can't come there apparently." So we had to drink without you. Well, you and, know, I don't go anywhere and, when it's so you know. hot. I hate being hot. <laughs> I mean, uh, we we so came we to church. To wait till we fall. came home from church okay. on Sunday, and I got out of the suit and I said. I am so tired of being hot. I'm going to move to Maine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe I'll move to Milwaukee. <laughs> I would love that, except you would die of boredom. I mean, you know, it, Milwaukee's great. I don't I'm know. From Milwaukee I, hear, I hear it's a forever. great town. I've, I've had some clients. It is. I mean, great we're we're very good to each other. You know what I mean? The, the mentality and the, and the kindness and, and I'm from here. So my whole life has been here, obviously 
But mm-hmm. I'm used to New York now, you know, like in the beginning when I used to right. go to New York, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a, I'm a Midwesterner and these people are evil and mean and they don't look at you and they don't talk to you. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. But, you know, not. some of us had a crappy Milwaukee life. So we're kind of like so want to leave Milwaukee. And in eight years, we'll be living where Heather's living in New York City. So I'll be there all the time. So then you'll get to see me in eight years constantly because I'll be there all the time. But I have kids, so That's I can't good. leave yet. So like eight years, it's one of those things, definitely. So now the last thing that I have to do is I get to tell you what I think of you. But before I do that, did we do okay? Do you think? Was it all right? Was this I a think we did great. What do you think? Interview? You're the one. You tell I me. think that we, we did do? well. Well, you know, Heather's the boss. That's what I always say. I'm like, you know what? The publicist okay. is always the boss and well, the client. So if the client was happy, well, meaning well, you. She'll, she'll tell me how I did. You can believe that. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> she'll probably call you up and she'll be like, um, you know, I she'll, heard that. She'll, and she'll say, She'll say, you know, I think before you do this next one, we'll do a little coaching. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, I can just hear that. Did you hear that, Heather? Because I think I've heard that exact same thing when we were talking about I think we need to do interview. a little coaching. <laughs> yes. But I think you did just fine, as a matter of fact. I think you accentuated the points that you needed to. I think we covered the things that we needed to, which is very good and awesome. So, yes, and, and I'm so glad that we got to do this because, you know, I feel a lot better now than I did 90 minutes ago because I was very tense. Right about five, ten minutes before we get very tense. Um, and I'm without alcohol. You know, sometimes wine is a good thing. Tomorrow we'll be doing yeah. wine. I don't, I'll be doing yeah, anything yeah. to relax tomorrow. That's a whole other thing. You, so I will these are my Andy, thoughts. Uh, yes. Okay, you go ahead. Good. I, no, I no, no, no. Oh, yeah. I have not been nervous at all about doing this. <gasps> yes. That is an accomplishment. Not at all. That's awesome. That is awesome. Because I think that's I important. I did my homework on you, I thought, I, and I kept seeing, okay. I, I thought, this is going to be fun. This is a fun gal. I, I'm going to enjoy talking yeah. to her. I definitely try to keep things very professional yet very light. I don't think interviews um, of any kind should be this tense because, you know, we're just two people Mm -hmm. talking. We're talking about business. We're talking about things that, you know, hopefully when they walk away, they're going to realize, hey, that Danny Taylor guy, he does this, he does this, he does this. And then they'll know a bit about me and they'll know a bit about Heather. You know, it's important. It's all about networking, letting people know. It kind of freaks me out that it's going to be on the radio. (laughs) Oh, of course. And well, the biggest thing is – Oh, but, you know, you don't think about it because right now we're just two people talking on a telephone. And, you know, I have the best job in the entire world because I get to introduce the world to people that aren't necessarily on TV or in film or have done a book or whatever have you. You're Mm -hmm. different. You're out of the norm. But yet you're not. You're a celebrity. So here we go. So these are my thoughts and my impressions of Mr. Danny Taylor. I have to say that Mm -hmm. I was most nervous about interviewing you because the first time I met Heather, the one thing that I realized was that she books some extraordinary talent and that she works with extraordinary people. I knew that when I met Chrissy. I knew that when I did my first interview for her. And obviously, of course, here we are now to you. She had told me um, very little about you, and I did my homework and my research, and I watched you. And these are the things that I have found. First and foremost, what I surmise is that people want to work with you because all of you to all of everything that you do, meaning whether it's buying materials for a home, whether it is showing a home to somebody, you are all in 100% of the time. I've said that only about a couple of different people that come on my show, and it's very, very true. Your heart resonates in the things that you write, in the things that you create, and in the things that you design. And I surmise also in the houses that you pick to show people. I think that you are a very transparent individual. By that, I mean you're good in intent, good in heart, good in mind, and good in soul. That is is an even minute, much more minute quality these days. And I'm so proud to say that I'm able to talk to somebody who is of great character, of great professionalism, and great as a person and a human being. That is not something that you find nowadays. I love the fact that you have that cute little accent because it makes you sound like you're like 30 years old and you're this trendy interior designer slash real estate guy who owns this business and he's so fab and so cool. I would imagine that you go home at night and you have a wonderful glass of wine and you dance around the house and you think of new creations. I love the fact that you are creative and innovative and that you make me smile. You just do. You're one of those guests that just come on and I'm like, I just smile from the time I talk to you to the time that I'm done. And I really meant what I said. When I come to New York City, I want to just, I want to be in your presence. And I surmise that your clients and your friends and the people that are near and dear to you have that same feeling. You're very homey. You give a person a feeling like they're welcome and that you're warm and that you're very accepting. And so I am very graciously accepting your presence in my life. And I hope you know you can come back anytime you would like to be a guest on my show. 
That sounds That's what great. I think of you. Uh, I, I, that, that's, a, that's, are you okay? Amazing. That's, that's amazing. That's, a, <laughs> that's, that's, true. A, that's, a, that's, I, that's, that's yes. glowing. That's, uh, that's, oh. that's quite something. I, I really appreciate that. It's very true. And you should remember that. I think it's important. That's why my show always ends this way, because I think it's important, not just for the people that don't know you to know that that's how I see you, but it's important that you know that that's how I see you, because that's what earned you onto the show. Not because Heather is my friend. It's you. You earned this and, and everything else that you've done. So congratulations to you. I really, really wish that you would keep inviting me to things. And one of these times I'll make it or we'll make it a point to meet in New York. But I do wish you luck with the sip and shop tomorrow. I hope that everything goes very well. And just to remind you, again, about an hour or two after this is live right now. So about an hour or two after this, it becomes an archived episode. So you can let everybody that you know know. They can go back anytime all year round to listen to this over and over and over again. Obviously, of course. <laughs> Um, so it'll be accessible. I mean, you could literally play it and replay it and replay it and replay it and all that good stuff. And if by some chance, I, I've mm-hmm. been starting to tell people this, but certainly, if you know, somebody who is looking for more exposure, um, not that I need more guests, but I'm always open and asking people, hey, if you know a creative, because I do everybody. I do authors, I do writers, I do um, designers, of course, business owners, charities, you name it, I do it. So I always like to keep my doors open and God knows you know everybody under the sun. Definitely. And we must drink together someday. So, yeah, you have to Absolutely. promise we'll drink together one day. <sighs> Danny Taylor just made my day, and now I don't have to be nervous anymore. Oh, my God, I feel so much better now. No, I Thank wish you. I could give you, you. A, I wish I could make you a DT cocktail right now. <gasps> oh, my God, and then we would sit and drink and then laugh and be like, oh, my gosh, let's dance and talk some more about the studio. Oh, my God, so you That's have right. to come to New York because we can't I, do that I, well, unless you come I, to New York I, I, because I, I don't know I if I'll get to North I, Carolina. I've got to, cause, Yay. I've got to go oh, see Heather. So, um, so, yeah, yeah we're going we're gonna to plan yeah. it. That sounds absolutely sounds wonderful, good. my dear. Thank you for giving me so much time here. And so I'll let you go. I'll wrap it up with my audience, and then I have to do more work on, well, George. So, yeah, if you ever get a chance to listen to my <laughs> George interview, I know you won't be able to tomorrow, but I'm just going to be curious, you know, because I'm petrified. So we'll see how well I pull it off. It's, it's, You're going to be fine. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Easy for you to say. Well, wait for the little post tomorrow when it says, way nervous. That's when you say something to me like I'm freaking out. But yeah. And I'll talk to the boss, Heather. We'll see. We'll compare notes and see if she thinks we did okay. But I think we did smashing. Smashing. I think so too. All right. See. All right, Mr. Taylor. Have a wonderful day. You too, Cindy. I enjoyed it. Thank Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Uh Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Tell me that that man did not have the cutest little voice, right? And I so meant that. One more time. Let's go through everything. Um, Obviously, the website, one more time, is going to be dtandcompany.com. As he mentioned, that all kind of circulates around everything else. He is on Instagram as DT and Company. He is on Pinterest. He also has two different Facebook pages, the DT and Company Real Estate and, of course, the Danny Taylor, if you want to find him personally. And don't want to forget, of course, the Just Ask DT group. When you go in there, all you have to do is just type in the Just Ask DT. Of course, you can ask to join, and then, of course, you can get permission from that point forward. And one more time, for those in North Carolina tomorrow from 4 to 8, it's the uh, event sip and shop, which is, of course, that information is also detailed on Danny's page as well. One more big, big round of thanks to Danny Taylor for coming on today. Huge thank you to Heather West, PR, for booking this together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. And and hopefully, Heather, you'll be satisfied with the both of us as it relates to our show today. I wanted to make sure, because I promised Kim Fricone I would not forget to talk about this. She is having her um, this coming Friday at Lubella Boutique, which is her place in Staten Island. It's located at 33 Page Avenue. They are going to be having an event this coming Friday. If I'm not mistaken, it's either a grand opening or... um, Let me just grab the details for you. I apologize. I just kind of come across this shortly before I came on air, so please forgive me if I'm kind of fumbling around here a little bit, Um, but I just want to make sure that I quote her correctly. For those of you that may or may not recognize Kim, she had been on the Mob Wives of New York City, actually, and so that's kind of how I got to know her from the first, um, I think we've been friends the last three months or something like that. Um, Okay, just to clarify, it's the actual launching of Lou Bella Boutique. That's again in Staten Island. It's this Friday, September 16th. She's located at 33 Page Avenue, and that's, of course, again in Staten Island. She'll be serving both wine and cheese. Obviously, it's a boutique, so fashions galore. I've seen her fashions. I've seen all the various clothes. Please support her. She's an absolutely lovely lady, and I'd appreciate it to you New Yorkers if you can make it a point to attend. I thank you so much for that. 
Once again, another reminder, tomorrow is my biker show. This is also the actual resurrection and um, first show back, actually. So I'm quite nervous, to tell you the truth, probably more so because of that. I know I've said all week long how nervous I am about interviewing George, and, and it's no lie. He can be a bit intimidating if you know who he is, um, but I'm going to try my best to do justice by him, his family, his wife, his children, and his life story, in addition to which um, we'll be talking not only about that, but, of course, the History Channel, and, of course, the new book that comes out on the 20th, which is Exile on Front Street. Now, that is on the Sun's Spotlight Channel. To those of you who have not been following, you need to go to that page, and it's the same link, blogtalkradio.com backslash, and the name of the show is called Sons Spotlight. Sons is in Sons of Anarchy and then Spotlight all put together. Six o'clock Central Standard Time. That will also be my last show for the weekend and then I plan on probably taking a sabbatical to write all weekend to tell you the truth. Um, so thanks so much to everybody who listened in today. I appreciate it and um, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow six o'clock with George. Have a good evening. Bugs. And Target is the only place you can find them and all their gear. Come join the fun and jam with us. Love is all you need. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.